Okay guys, I'm going to continue with a similar technique, near side cradle to the cow catcher. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start to take the back and then I'm going to redirect back to the front and, and attack with another choke. Now these are techniques you can do against a butterfly, but uh, I'll get into that uh, here in a bit. Okay, so same thing with the cradle, this angle here. Same thing with the cradle, arms in front, not tucked, not in a butcher shop style. I'm staying tight. I yank them up, adjust my weight over the head on my feet. Now I start to go to my cow catcher, pivot behind. Now what I'm going to do here is, you see how my knee gets under his arm here? So basically if his arm is inside my knee, then, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to waste any time on this unless I'm going to go back to a regular guillotine, okay, which is fine. But most of the time, this will pop awake. And this is kind of a cool little position. There's a lot of little nasty tricks you can do here. But I'm going to go here like I'm sitting to take his back, but I feel my knee get through. So why take the risk of going to my back, right, when I can finish on top? So from here now, I'm going to redirect and start to come back on top. And my arm's going to go in between my own thigh. As I come back up, I'm going to shuff my weight and I'm going to let that shoulder come out and I'm just going to finish here. Real clean strangle. You're going to feel like your head pops off. Right? So it's very, very strong. Okay? So I'm out here looking for the back and I'm like, oh, I don't want to sit because I see my, I can feel my knee through his arm. I come right back up and I drive him forward. Swift. Cut. And once again, I'm on my feet when I finish, so I'm very mobile, and I can transition back to the back anytime I want. So I'm basically going halfway, noticing my arms in position, and then I'm coming right back. This is a really strong choke. I see a lot of guys do this, they always fall back with it. You know, there's some pros and cons to that. Um, I much prefer to sit it, do it sitting and, and finish it here. Because he's the pressure of getting jammed here makes him kind of immobile. And the quality of the choke is pretty amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna moss. Get my cradle. He comes back up. I'm off my knees. Get above him. Now switch to my cow catcher. Step through. And then, oh, oh, I felt my knee come through. See how my knee's through? Come back. As I push, I'm gonna, when I slide back, I want his shoulder to go in front of me. So it's not tucked out the armpit, and then hips in and squeeze. And then of course, it can always come back to the back. Okay, I always call this a boa choke. Not that I like snakes or nothing, but I, I didn't, at the time, I, I think I taught this, I don't know, 15 years ago, forever ago. And um, I didn't know what else to call it. So I still call it a boa choke. If someone's got a better name for it, then be my guess because that's a strangle not a choke technically so that's another good move to hit and there's a lot of misdirection here a lot of misdirection a lot of confusing of hitting that cow kitchen now I'm behind you now I'm back in front of you and uh, that finish right there is a it's a cunt to get out of it's a it's not it's not easy and you can really put it on someone like really bad you know burn their house down bad so I definitely recommend it 